Hello everyone, in this video I'll be going through some of the advanced settings that Spotlights have in DAS Studio. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in DAS Studio again. I've already got my Spotlight here that I've already put in into my scene. I've got a camera here and I've got another camera here. Okay, and I've also set my environment to scene only mode. So the only light source that will be in the scene is this actual um, Spotlight. Right, so if I go back to my main camera, camera three. Right, so here we are. Here's my figure and here's my light here. And here are the settings over here. So if we go to spotlight parameters, spotlight, light, we'll have a look at these settings. Now these settings here, illumination, color, intensity, photometric, I've already gone through in the distant light tutorial. So I'll put the link in the description for that. So in the description box, so you can see uh, more about that. I'm going to go straight into, into the spread angle. So what is the spread angle? So the spread angle is the amount of area, the angle that the spotlight covers. So if I increase that, you'll see that the area is increased. So what you're seeing now is that if I go to my camera one, you can see that it's increased here. All right. So if I decrease this, You'll see that, see here, the angle, the angle's de decreased. You can tell by this circle here. And obviously the, the brightness of the light has gotten a lot more because the angle, the amount of distance we're covering with the, with, the, with the spread angle is less. So it's obviously more focused in this area here. So if I set that to the default, go back to my camera three. The next setting is the beam exponent. Now what the beam exponent is, the actual focus of the light, I like to think of it as like the focus of the light. So the bigger the, the number, the more it will kind of focus on that particular bit. So you'll see, you can see that it's actually very similar to the spread angle, where it kind of focuses on that bit. So you could imagine using this as some, as you could imagine using this as a, for example, like a torch effect, like you would have a torch, someone holding a torch and the effect of the light going from a torch or car lights or something similar to that. So that's what you could probably think about using with this kind of effect. Obviously the spread angle and the beam exponent kind of work hand in hand. So you can choose how you want to work, work with that and how, what options you want to choose. So if I decrease this, you'll see that the actual beam gets a lot bigger. There you go, so it kind of gets more softer, the light gets more softer. So I'll set that back to the default. So the light the light geometry was set to point. And remember when the light geometry is set to point with spotlights, the height and the width don't matter. This These settings don't work whatsoever. Now the other setting is two-sided. So the actual two-sided setting doesn't work at all with spotlights because if we go to our spotlight, camera two, you can see that our light source is just putting our light here. So the two-sided the two-sided option won't work. There's not like another light source is going to come out from here. That's not that's not going to happen whatsoever. So that doesn't actually happen. So this actual two-sided section uh, option doesn't actually work. Right. So the next thing we'll do, I'll show you what ge uh, geometry of rectangle looks like. When you actually do the rect rectangle geometry, you actually see a physical rectangle here. And as you can see, if we go back to camera three, right, this is great, this happened. So what's happened here is, as you can see over here, you've got, in my camera two, you've got here this, this kind of rectangle here, this actual geometry of the spotlight is covering the lens of the camera and the way to get rid of that is to this is through this option here render emitter so if I click on that and set that to off you'll see it disappears and when I go back to my camera 3 I can actually see what I'm doing so that just takes that off you you really don't need the render emitter on at all because you know you've set the light ge light geometry to rectangle so you know you've got um, a, a, you know a soft box essentially Okay, so if I go back to camera two, I'll just set that back on to render. So generally you would probably have this set to off. I'll just set it back on so we can see the option again. 
So that's that's what it actually looks like when you do um, spotlight the rectangle. So if we go through a disc, guess what shape it's going to look like? A disc. So there's your disc. It's literally a round disc, a round circle. Um, the same with sphere. It would just be a sphere, like a round ball or something. So there it is. And obviously with these with these different geometries, you get different lighting effects. So you should really play around with them. And the cylinder actually looks like a cylinder. So there we go. So again, once again, the two-sided option doesn't work whatsoever on on light on spotlights. So these this setting doesn't work at all. Generally, when when I'm using uh, spotlights, I the light geometry I, I I use either point, rectangle, or disc. I very rarely use sphere or, or cylinder because I don't think there's much. Uh, options uh, really you don't get much difference between rectangle or sphere and cylinder apart from the shape it doesn't really do much difference but i'm sure you could play around with those settings and maybe you might find something that you that is suitable to your to your render that you're trying to create so i'll set that back to rectangle so here we got the option you only get this option with uh light jump to rectangle is light portals now unfortunately i haven't been able to get light portals to work because i don't think they work in ira anymore uh, with the latest version of DAS Studio, which is 4.10, so I'm not too sure about that. Uh, and I'll just show you what basically what um, light portals do. So this is an image that I've seen of uh, Deviant Art. This is not what I've done; somebody else has done it, and they've done it with a lower version of DAS Studio, not 4.10, the latest version. I'm not too sure what version they did it with. And basically, what light portals do is give you realistic light through windows. So as you can see, this was done with a spotlight and you can, the spotlight kind of, the light goes through and it kind of goes to the ground here. With our portal light, you just kind of have the light coming through the actual window and there's no extra light on the ground. Now I haven't been able to get this to work, so I can't really attest to this, whether it's any good. Personally, I think portal lights, you don't really need them with IRA. Um, with the different lighting options we have, with the different things we can do in in DAS Studio, portal light portal these portal light portals don't really make much difference whatsoever. I'm sure you can use this several other ways to create excellent lighting, indoor lighting, and I think that's the best way to really go through it. Is not really worry about light portals. There's hundreds of other ways to create uh, in, uh, realistic interior lighting. So in next week's video, I'll be looking at point lights and linear point lights. And that would basically complete our three part of, of the different lights you can use in the studio.